Hello, Baptismal Sunday. Uh, in 1 Corinthian, Paul says, God is faithful. Who has called you into fellowship with Christ? We who are baptized are with Christ. Let us, let us celebrate this wonder of spirit and, and um, having Christ within us. Today, as we, we remember our own baptism, we worship in praise, word, water, and song. Welcome to worship. Child, go between of God, love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Street child, beat child, no place left to go. Hurt child, used child, no one wants to know. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone. Everyone alive. Grown child, old child, memory full of years. Sad child, lost child, story told in tears. This year, this year, let the day arrive. When Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Spare child, spoiled child, having wanting more. Wise child, faith child, knowing joy in store. This year. This year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Hopeful, peace child, God's stupendous sign. This year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Now our call to worship. In the beginning, God created. God, baptize us with your creativity. Allow your hands, gracious God, to wash over us like when you created the heavens and the earth. God, baptize us with your creativity. Let your mind see into our darkness, filling our void so that we will never be formless again. God, baptize us with your creativity. We are your canvas and you are the creator. Make us the masterpiece that you desire us to be. God, baptize us with your creativity so that may, we may be witness of your splendor and majesty. And please join me in our opening prayer. Lord, we come to you today exposed with the understanding that we have sinned against you. We have done wrong in your sight and we ask that you show us forgiving spirit. Forgive us of our sins that we may be able to forgive ourselves. Lord, we want to be pleasing in your sight. 
We understand that our baptism was of water. It was baptism of repentance. Today, we ask that you touch us, Lord, and baptize us in your spirit. Pour out your spirit upon us so that your sons and daughters may prophesy. Your young people may see visions. Your old people may dream dreams. Baptize us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit so that we may do your will. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Story for all ages. Wow, I'm like, I got so many stories again. I just can't pick which one to read. Um, this is a cute one from um, Beth, When God Made You. And then, wow, I have to share this one. The Moon Keeper, such a special story. But because it's Baptismal Sunday, I went through the, oh, there's a story to him back by the gym. And I w went through several children's Bibles, and I saw this one, the Rhyme Bible. I didn't even know we had it, but it is so sweet. Uh, it's about Jesus being baptized. In fact, it comes from Matthew 3, 4, but it's written, well, in rhyme, because it's the Rhyme Bible. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Jesus is God's son. Well, we know that, don't we? But this is how it goes. Down to the river, the people came. It wasn't a picnic. It wasn't a game. To confess their sins, the people came to confess their sins. Then John the Baptist said, come on in, because they went in the water to get baptized. I love this guy's expression. Whoa. This is the way to show you repent. So into the water, the people went. Isn't this cool? I love this book. A man walked up to the riverside and stepped into the flowing tide. John the Baptist was quite surprised when he looked he saw those gentle eyes. I bet you know who that is, don't you? Look at John. He's like, what? Hmm. Jesus, he cried. Why did you come? You've never sinned against anyone. But Jesus replied, God's will be done. It was told in the Bible that this would happen. So Jesus was baptized, just like we're celebrating baptism this week. So Jesus was baptized that very day to show everyone he would follow God's way. Then a voice that came from heaven above said, This is my son, the one whom I love. And the Spirit of God came down like a dove. Cool. That was when Jesus began to preach. The people loved to hear him teach. They gathered around in every town and listened until the sun went down. See all those people listening? Jesus welcomed all who came, even us when we come. He healed the sick, the blind, the lame. The things he did showed everyone that Jesus really was God's son. Matthew 3 through 4, in a very fun, rhymy way. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember your baptism. Blessings. <laughs> Wander out under the sky How oh, Jesus the Savior did come for to die For poor simple people like you and like I I wonder as I wonder Mary birthed 
Sunday, we, we remember Jesus' baptism, but we also remember our own baptisms. Our Bible lesson for today is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. Hear these words as I read them to you. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Here ends the reading from God's Holy Word. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation to the hearts of each of these, your people, be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some of you are probably like me, and you can remember the day that you went into a video store, and you discovered that the new videos were only available as DVDs. But all you had at home was a VCR player. It was an eye-opener for me to realize that if I didn't upgrade my technology, not only would I miss out on the benefits that improved products offer, but my VCR-based status quo would no longer be supported. And by the way, if, in case you haven't gotten the word, DVDs and Blu-rays are almost extinct now, as we are able to stream so much video content. Even this worship service can be streamed. Those disciples of John the Baptist in Ephesus had not gotten the word. In their ignorance, they were satisfied with the baptisms they had received in the way of John the Baptist. 
They felt cleansed from their old sins and helped to reshape their lives for the better. But now Paul arrived and told them about an upgrade. Baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only would the power of Jesus' resurrection come upon them to relieve them of the guilt of their sins, but the power of God's Holy Spirit would transform their lives in radically new ways. We're told that those Ephesian disciples of John hadn't even known that there was a Holy Spirit. Do you recall hearing about how the last Japanese soldiers finally became convinced that World War II was over and came out of hiding in 1974, almost 30 years after the end of the war? Some of those stragglers truly had not received news of the Japanese surrender, and they stayed at their duty post for 30 years. Others stubbornly refused to believe or accept what they heard, and they held out long after it made any sense. Like the Ephesian disciples of John the Baptist, Many of us have no idea that we are to receive the Holy Spirit. Maybe we have not ever gotten the news. Or maybe we have stubbornly been suspicious of what we have heard. Or we've been afraid to act upon it. Maybe you have heard of some Christians or some churches that were said to be spirit-filled and exhibited what we in the more mainline congregations considered to be overly enthusiastic and even bizarre religious behavior. Babbling strange sounds, passing out, jumping in the aisles. Or maybe you feel that only very special people, chosen by God, ever receive God's Holy Spirit into their lives. Maybe you fear that if you were to ask for the Holy Spirit to take hold of your life, God might start demanding hard and dangerous things of you. In the way that we tiptoe around the Holy Spirit, you would think that we were standing at the bottom of Hoover Dam, a small night light in hand, afraid to plug it in for fear of what might happen. But we miss a great deal when we avoid or neglect or ignore or dismiss God's gift of the Holy Spirit to us. Like those Ephesian Christians encountered, we yearn to be rooted and renewed. A Sunday school teacher once had her class take some time to write letters to God. One boy wrote, Dear God, we had a good time at church today. We wish you could have been there. Annie Dillard wrote in her book, Teaching a Stone to Talk, that as Christians we play on the floor like children with chemistry sets not knowing the power we hold in our hands. If the power should ever come together, we would not want to be wearing straw or velvet hats. We ought to be wearing crash helmets or construction hard hats because the power of God is so strong that we would need something to protect ourselves. When Paul arrived in Ephesus, he found the church there spinning its wheels. They needed the Holy Spirit. We receive the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our baptism. The Holy Spirit is God, is of God, and does the work of God. The Spirit guides us, comforts us, and most important in our age, energizes us simply because you have been baptized, 
God makes available to you more power than you could ever imagine. You may have been baptized outwardly with water, but inwardly you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works within your soul to bring it into life and to transform your living into something pleasing to God. But being baptized isn't enough by itself. Al Capone was baptized. So was Adolf Hitler. So was Joseph Stalin. A person has to be willing to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in their life in order for God to work his way with power. About now, you might be sitting there thinking about how you sure would like God's Holy Spirit actively working within you. But you just don't feel it. You don't feel the Holy Spirit within you. What now? In the midst of the wartime shortages of the 1940s, Sugar was rationed. In a New York restaurant, one of the customers who had already gotten his share of sugar for his coffee called out loudly for more. The waitress called back, stir up what you've got. If you're longing to feel the power and the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life, that is exactly what you have to do. Stir up what you've got. The Holy Spirit is already yours. God has already given it to you. You don't need more. You have enough and plenty already. Stir up what you've got. And that is what we're going to do right now. We are going to remember our baptisms. We will reaffirm our baptismal vows or the promises that our parents or godparents made in our name. We will rekindle the embers banked within our souls. God gave us the Holy Spirit in our lives when we were baptized, whenever that was, however old we were. Let's stir up what we've got. Let's get rooted and renewed in our baptism. Sisters and brothers, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Water from streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the waters to renew our commitments to Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has given us life, and the Creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the power of sin and death? And let us respond. We renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of our sin. Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? We accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord 
in union with the church that Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and ages. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the Creator Almighty, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, the life you breathed into us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows. Your spirit blows where you will. We cannot stop you, God. But we confess that sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the Spirit, or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty, O God. Come, refresh us. Root and renew us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew us in the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make us long for your coming reign. Most holy creator God, Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord. Spirit of fire, spirit of over the water, spirit of holiness, all glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Let us touch the water now. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Receive this blessing. May you be rooted and renewed. May you live in the spirit of your baptism, even when you are led into wild and hard places. With repentance and trust, give yourselves to God. With fasting and prayer, strengthen yourselves against temptation. And may God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. And may the Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray, that you might keep faith with God. Be in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us approach God in prayer now, first with a moment of silence for each of us to lift up our own prayers, and then in the prayer that I will offer, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you this day for the opportunity to worship you and to open our souls to you. As we remember that Jesus was baptized, we realize that we too have need for newness of life and the rebirth that baptism symbolizes. 
Too often we act as if we were not baptized. We have many things to confess. We nurture perceived slights and become preoccupied with how ill-willed we think some other people are. We hold on to old wrongs that feel like weights on our spirits. We draw wrong conclusions from the behavior or words of others because we have misunderstood or not perceived them rightly. We worry about tomorrow as if you do not always go before us. We insist on having our own way. Gracious God, be with us on our journey, because we know our souls need regular reworking. Help us know that we are the ones who truly stand in the need of prayer. Help us to find healing for our own souls in order that we might put aside the baggage of the past that weighs so heavily upon us. Help us to try new and more generous behaviors that are filled with love and goodwill. Help us to withhold our judgments until we truly understand. We know we should not expect for life to be all smooth sailing. So we ask that you would give us the courage to take on challenges that will help us grow. May we be granted strength to master the difficulties that lie ahead of us. We ask your gracious mercy upon those whose lives are disrupted by illness, uncertainty, and death. And swing low over all those whose souls are filled with hate. Grant that we might be part of solutions to bring about greater justice and more lasting peace in our own situations. May 2021 be a year of healing in so many ways. All this we ask in Jesus' name. And we pray now as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please keep the following people in your prayers this week. Betty, Jan, Bob and Gwen, Judy, Nancy, Baby Eli, Baby Addison, Howard, Jean, and Jerry, and Karen and family. This week we celebrate with the following people. Happy birthday to John, Mitch, Livia, John, and Jack. And happy anniversary to Brian and Barb, and Mike and Rhonda. We're still in the red phase, so there will be no in-person activities meetings or studies at the church this week. The new Faithful and Inclusive study begins to meet this Wednesday, the 13th at 7 p.m. It'll take place online via Zoom, so please contact Rick Peckman if you're interested in taking that class, and he will send you a link to get in on that Zoom gathering. And as always, you can continue to send in your offerings either directly to the church at 885 Pembina Trail, or you can give your offerings online through our website at dlumc.org. Thank you. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep and a baby's low cry, and the star brings its power, the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem, great news again. There's a tumult of joy. 
Let us join them together now in our benediction. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Go now and Amen.